Hello, hello, people. I'm international master Andrei Ostrovsky, and this is Learn from Chess Blitz, the show that gives you an opportunity to learn something new while playing against me. So uh, today's episode, today's stream actually features not only me, but uh, also uh, running nose, uh, sore throat, and other pleasures of a typical cold. So I'm ill. You can probably hear that. This definitely affects my voice. This will probably affect the uh, general length of uh, the stream, but uh, it definitely didn't affect the fact of uh, actually streaming tonight, and uh, it uh, definitely won't affect my uh, fighting mood. So I'm going to attack you. I'm going to continue playing aggressive chess, just like one week ago. I think we had a lot of fun, and uh, why not to repeat that? And uh, I'm really happy that some people are already watching this and hanging out on uh, live chat. If you're for the first time here, then uh, you should know that I play on leechas.org. Uh, this means uh, to play against me, you have to go there, find me by my nickname, Mostrovsky. So as for the spelling, you can uh, use the one from uh, this short link leading to my YouTube channel, bit.ly slash Mostrovsky. So the spelling is the same, Mostrovsky. Find me there, uh, challenge me for a five minute game or three plus two bleeds game and just wait uh, until I accept your challenge. Um, so actor is here. Hey, I appreciate your streams. Many thanks. And Swihoxx is also here. Uh, very nice. So here we go. I already have some challenges, so let's accept the first one. In just a sec. Uh, let it be uh, Shri Shirov. Accept. And I'm playing with black, so with black it's not that simple to attack, but well, I'll try my best to play aggressively. So knight to f3. Um, let's try g6. I have never ever played dragon especially this accelerated dragon with black but it's just perfect choice for our tonight's topic i think or today's topic depends on uh where you are so knight to c3 let's say knight to c6 exerting some pressure on this knight on d4 now knight to f6 looks great and f3, as far as I remember, uh, isn't a great move. Um, probably because of just queen to b6. I guess queen to b6 is possible now. <clears throat> I might be wrong, but queen b6, knight f5, queen b2, knight g7, king f8, knight to a4, queen b4, c3. Uh, well, after knight a4, I have queen to a3, obviously, but then bishop goes to h6. Um, let me remember, is it the case here or not? Because I have never ever played this with black, so I have a feeling that queen b6 should be great. Uh, but knight f5. So the main move is bishop to c4 here, not f3. So let's try to understand what is going on here. Queen b6, knight f5, queen takes b2, knight to a4, attacking my queen. Or first knight g7, king f8, and then knight a4. Um, say I play queen to a3, bishop goes to h6. I can take the knight. But then knight jumps to e6 with check. It looks a bit dangerous. Well, maybe I'm stupid here, but, well, I don't remember. Let's castle. I have a feeling that queen b6 is correct, but maybe I'm wrong. So now if I play queen b6, then it simply castles. So probably now d5 is a move. I do remember something like queen b6, queen d2, knight takes c4, typical tactics. But knight to f5, how to react to that? Okay, we'll analyze it after the game. <coughs> so, by the way, you can expect a lot of uh, things like this. I mean, coffin. Cough, cough. 
will accompany our stream tonight. So that's the point. I mean, uh, since there is no bishop on c4, I have a chance to play more aggressively. So now e5 deserves serious attention. I guess e5 is a move now. Let's go for it. The idea is simple. If knight goes away, I just play d4. And if this thing, I can probably sacrifice the pawn on d5. But to come up with some sort of attack. Because after this exchange, the c-file becomes open. And who knows, maybe I have some compensation, maybe not. I see this position for the first time from Black's perspective, so... I'm not sure what is the theory here. I'm just playing active chess, aggressive chess, trying to attack. Alright, so CD5 looks natural. So let's take... Now, bishop to e6 looks like a move, but then <clears throat> knight takes f6, queen f6, bishop g5 is unpleasant. So maybe bishop to b7, but I think b file should be, should be open for my rook. I can probably just take on d5, queen d5 and play something like, uh, who knows, queen c7. Intending bishop to f5 if queen takes rook. Queen f8, bishop f8 in that case. Bishop d3. Not so clear a position, honestly. So these two rooks may be potentially quite annoying against the queen. So to take the knight on d5 or not to take? Well, let's try this line. I know it's absolutely against the spirit of dragon to exchange queens, but I want to try something along the b-file quickly. Maybe it will work, maybe not. Let's see. Maybe it won't work. <laughs> All right, so rook b8. All right, this looks like a slight help. That is what I wanted to actually achieve. So now I can take on a2 with the rook, activating the rook seriously. But bishop a3, that is what I actually um, underestimated, but now I have rook to a1. And this looks great, so bishop to c4, right, right. Oh, this is just the whole bishop. This is very generous. I mean, I didn't expect that. And this is just a checkmate, I guess. Wow, just a fantastic finish of the game. I mean, white all of a sudden decided to lose the game. Checkmate. Here we go. So, analysis board. Let's go here. I guess after f3, correct move is queen to b6. And now, if queen goes to d2, let's say I have knight takes c4. And then I take on d4. It's a well-known tactics. But uh, I was a bit confused by this knight to f5. So was it possible or not? And that's an interesting question. So I have to take here. Knight takes. I go king f8, attacking the knight. Knight on c3 is also heading. Now... <coughs> 
knight to a4 should be played 100%. And uh, what to do? So queen to a3 or queen to b4? If queen to b4, then c3 with the temple. This is not very cool. But who knows, maybe that is exactly what we should try here. We're a minor piece down now, right? No, it's it's a bad idea for black. So maybe uh, queen to a3, attacking both. Now, knight on g7 is definitely handy, so probably bishop h6 should be played. And here I take the knight. Uh, I was not very um, sure about this move. Knight to e6 check. And then knight c7 and takes the rook if I go to e8. Uh, and if I go to g8, this also looks a bit ugly. But probably that is what uh, black should do here, because after all, it is the extra pawn. And, uh, well, white has a compensation here, but maybe this compensation isn't sufficient. I mean, so chronic student came. Hello, my friend. Um, yeah, probably something like that, because what I played was also okay, but, uh, well, probably queen b6 is just better. Uh, who is the expert in dragon theory, accelerated dragon theory? Just let me know what to do here with black. Uh, d5 was played, castles. And uh, here, if I take on e4, there is a trap. So, and I take c6 attacking my queen already, and if... Um, well, actually, I could have played that. So, actually, I can take on d2 now, rook d2 and b6. That was the great way for black to get the, the almost the perfect position with the open b file against this b2 pawn and uh, great possibilities. Because if f takes e4, this pawn is also vulnerable. Yeah, so I just blundered the fact that I take on d2 with, with, with check, you know. That is about having the cold and playing chess simultaneously. That's why I played e5, which should be also like sort of theory, but uh, first of all, I didn't know that. Uh, second of all, it worked not that well, at least not that great as I expected. Uh, so I took here 95, 95, queen d5 here, I guess taking on d5 is already a mistake. So probably queen c7 deserved attention, in which case queen takes a8 leads to uh, bishop to f5 attacking this c2 and the queen simultaneously. Uh, looks like uh, queen to f8 is the only move, where after um, I'm not sure uh, how this position should be evaluated because after taking on the fade, bishop to d3, after all, white has two rooks against the queen. and uh, Same pair of bishops, just like black, so I guess uh, black shouldn't be better here for sure. And uh, in general, maybe black is struggling to, to equalize here. That's why I took on d5, but after that, uh, white had very pleasant position. So after bishop e6 and rook a5, that was absolutely correct move, uh, attacking my a7 pawn. But after rook to b8, I think uh, the easiest way to avoid <coughs> complications was uh, to start with something like c3, making my bishop absolutely passive. And after that, just completing the development with the bishop somehow, uh, activating another rook. And white is just a pawn up, so there is no such a necessity of uh, taking this a7, additional one, that's what I mean. So rook a7 gave me a chance, so I took here, played rook a8 and rook to a2. So here, I think um, white should have played uh, king to b1 first, controlling a1 square, and now there is a threat of bishop a3. For instance, if I play e4, which looks very, <coughs> excuse me, dangerous at first glance, why well, can try exactly this? Bishop a3 completely limiting my rook here on a2. And I'm going to play down the rook. It feels like that. So I guess after king to b1, uh, black has to run away with the rook. So king to b1, rook somewhere, and then white has the time to complete the development. Still have an extra pawn. So bishop a3 is a mistake. After that, of course, I activate my rook, bring my bishop to c4. Now the only chance was to take this bishop and to play the exchange down, but white decided to do this. And of course, after rook b1, bishop c3, just bishop a6 with the checkmate, okay? So, <clears throat> uh, some other people came, Kramnik student, uh, Antonio Ferreira. Hi, Andre, he says, long time not see. After thinking a lot, returning to Lee Chess where good but anonymous chess players can be banned. Um, all right. All right. Um, 
Yeah, it's why Jose X says comment soon. Karamic student also challenged great guys. So let's play. Let's play. The second challenger was uh, Chuck Radio. So let's play Chuck first. And again, black pieces. So let's play C5, but no dragon. No dragon. Let's play something uh, less theory consuming, I would say. So D3 again. I have a feeling that we already played something like that. And I was like very slow last week. Slow like a turtle. And my opponent was able to outplay me uh, mainly because of that. So 92. All right, knight c6. Let's continue playing uh, aggressively in the center. So last time I played something like h5, as far as I remember. So should I repeat this line or not? I'm not quite sure. Because probably my opponent is well prepared this time. I'll try a different approach. I'll play knight to e7, supporting d5. And g6. Bringing the bishop to g7. Also, quite typical approach, I guess. Oh, that's why Jose X just super chatted. 4.64. Many thanks. Many thanks. So, super chat is the possibility to support me financially a bit. So, where you type your uh, chats, you can uh, notice the sign of a dollar. And if you press the dollar sign, uh, there will be a possibility to actually send me some bucks. Rook to e1, castles. So I didn't play uh, anything uh, super chat deserving so far. But probably it's why Jose X just appreciated uh, in general my approach. So I didn't search for excuses, didn't cancel. <coughs> Sorry, uh, the stream because of uh, my cold and so forth. So maybe that forced uh, Twihog's X uh, donate a bit. So e5. This e5 may become a liability. I can probably just attack it right now. What if I just play queen c7 right away attacking the pawn? Let's check it. I'm not sure that e5 was a good decision. European viewers must be careful with the decimal. I wish they wouldn't be that careful. <laughs> so 464 without the point after 4 would be also quite uh, great. I would say. So one day, right? One day. By the way, Twahoe's like, what should I do uh, for you that you would donate something like that without the point? Queen to e2. Protecting pawn e5. All right, so actually I overestimated my chances here. So white is more or less fine now protecting this pawn. What can I do in general here is just to keep attacking this pawn uh, gradually. Uh, f6 is a typical idea from French defense. I can also go crazy a bit uh, on the queen side, like pushing my pawns b5, a5, b4, a4, but this may be uh, a bit slow. Knight to b4 is probably an idea here as well. Uh, but then knight goes to f1 simply. So there is nothing there. Mm, knight to f5, intended knight to d4, but then c3, simply. So yeah, I guess let's just play with pawns. <laughs> so Twakosek says, play another 362 games. What do you mean?
Knight to f1. <coughs> so white is preparing this typical attack, right? h4, knight h2, knight g4, so forth. Let's go. Let's try to ignore that. I don't think it is an automatic checkmate. The only issue is that uh, white shouldn't think a lot. So it's possible just to play this moves without much thinking, like h4, knight h2, and so forth. Okay, a4. Black can do the same, actually. Okay, a3 is already a hook. So now I can open up files that are easier than before. And this gives me a possibility to come up with a passed pawn even. After c4, a3, I will have a passed pawn. I think it's already quite, quite good for black. Good version. So, in general, I think for white, it's better to avoid weakening the uh, position on the queen side additionally. So, to avoid making this additional moves, like helping me with opening files there. So, my plan is simple. I'm going to play a3. And then after exchange on a3, maybe even knight to b4 or something like that. Okay, now I can get rid of my bad French bishop. Should I do that or not? Um, looks interesting. Just apply bishop a6, bishop f1, but this gives white two bishops. What about knight f5 first, attacking d4? My question is how... White is going to protect that with the queen d1. All right. Now let's go here. So Pass pawn is already there. And this square is my target. I'm going to occupy it with the knight. And this gives me a chance to simplify position a bit. In the view of white's attack is probably uh, not that bad. But rook gets here. So probably... I should have played this a bit differently. All right, let's play a2. Maybe it's just uh, too optimistic. But I think I have some chances to protect that pawn. Strange position. The pawn is already on a2, but... I'm not sure. Great factor. C4. What is this? What if I just uh, ignore it? Say play knight to b4 protecting this pawn. I didn't get the idea. I probably could have just captured that, but... Okay, I think it's uh, more important to have the pawn a2 protected. So now I'm going to bring my bishop to c4. That's the idea at least. Mm, okay, that's what I wanted to try. Two passed pawns, but 30 seconds on the clock. That is potentially very dangerous, very risky situation. But I have some clear plan, sort of clear plan. So I'm going to uh, actually get here with my rook at some point. <coughs> if queen takes c4, I do it right away. Oh, this is the whole rook. My goodness, this is the whole rook. And my knight easily comes back to d5. Great blockading position. Well, this should be just winning. But if I don't blunder, simple tactics, my goodness. Okay, still playable. I forgot that I would have this move. But it's unpleasant, of course. 
slightly unpleasant. All right. We're short of time. We're short of time. Knight to f5 attacking the bishop. Taking this bishop. Going back. Okay, let's take this one. Take this one. Yeah, we're gonna win this. Checkmate. All right, second checkmate in the row, you know. So the first game was ended by the checkmate and the second one as well. Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. It's usually very, very pleasant. Okay. Um, let's have a look. Let's have a look what happened in this game. So I do believe that White's problem started somewhere around a three move. So in fact, the best strategy, according to my experience, is just to ignore all this... Uh, aggressively looking pawn moves because I don't really attack anything so bishop f4 was all right I played a4 now just play h4 just continue your play uh, bring the knight to h2 bring the knight to g4 then something to h6 so continue the attack so uh, the less uh, exposed your position here on the queen side the better so uh, it's better to have no vulnerabilities at all. I mean, uh, don't help me with opening files there because when files are open, I definitely get some counterplay. I get some targets and you are distracted from this straightforward attack on the king side. That's the rule number one. So basically, if I play a3 here, okay, you just play b3, nothing really happened. I mean, everything is all right. So nothing dangerous for white. So you can simply ignore all this stuff. I can't really open a position here and uh, probably at some point you will just uh, checkmate me there on the uh, king side. Or at least you will have some play. <coughs> and look at what happened. After a3 I played b4. Again, the best strategy was just to ignore it. Just to wait until I take on a3. There is nothing dangerous there, but you took. And now I definitely have some play. So, look at this. Uh, knight f5, queen d1, a3. I have a pawn, look. Uh, this is already quite pleasant uh, to have such a pawn. Maybe you missed something here. So I thought that not c4, but c3 deserved attention. Controlling b4 square and intending to play something like rook e2, uh, attacking that uh, guy. And uh, I didn't see anything better, at least having uh, just only seconds on my clock, I didn't see anything better than queen a5 here. Uh, protecting it in advance and exerting some pressure on c3 where after you can consider playing queen to b3 and there is a problem for, for black because c3 is protected. You're going to play a rook to e2 and uh, if I play bishop a6 you can take on a2 so I can't play bishop a6, that's the uh, issue. And uh, if I play something like queen to a3, well maybe, maybe I still have some play. Okay, so if, if you take, I take, you play rook e2, I can take here, you can take here. So white should be still better, <coughs> only a bit, of course. But if compared to what happened in the game, I think it was much better, right? That's the idea. Um, rook takes a2 wasn't uh, best, I guess, simply queen takes c pawn rook b1 and bishop c1 it happened later let's have a look at this so no i think this position is already quite dubious uh for white so if you take on c4 i just play rook b1 bishop c1 i just take the rook again it's lost i mean absolutely lost uh they think that you can't take my knight because i take your bishop on c1 i have extra rook and my pawn is still on the board so i guess here after queen c1 and rook to b3 my plan is simple, I'm going to play this and this, and then rook to b1. So everything is somehow well coordinated here, at least this group of pieces. Pawn, knight, rook, another pawn. So maybe rook bishop e4 deserved attention, controlling b1 at very least, and c2 in advance. Now c4 is Henny. probably I have nothing better than playing c3. And uh, what? What here? Do you have anything? First of all, I can't play c2 right away. So probably you can come up with some sort of counterplay after c6, just deflected me. So if I take with the knight, you take my pawn. 
but I can actually try c2 in fact bishop takes c2 rook to c3 that is a resource in which case you can attack my rook this way in which case rook takes c2 queen takes b4 and uh what if i take on c6 you just play this right and if compared to our game i have no chance to well i have the chance to protect it after rook to c1 check but you take with the bishop back and should be winning i mean the trick here is that uh, well you can take with the rook as well but here i take bishop takes a1 queen and queen goes back to b2 yeah but it's much better to take with the bishop. So yeah, it's potentially not that clear. So I think that was your best chance, just to play bishop b4 here. To activate the light squared bishop and to cover the most vulnerable spot, b1 square. All right. So. Yeah, interesting game. But in general, the strategy should include avoiding this unnecessary weakening uh, on the flank where you are not uh, the best side right so queen side is definitely black swan so your side is king side so you should avoid playing on the queen side especially with pawns creating hooks and focus on the king side instead <coughs> okay let's go further let's go further here is Kromnik student except somebody's calling me not in time and the third game with black pieces wow that is a bit annoying to play with black and try to attack somehow, but all right. Let's try knight to f6. A lurking or alikine defense. e5, knight e5. There is some sort of attacking potential here, I guess, for both sides, especially after cd6. And d5 immediately, well known trick. Presented by uh, Lawrence Trent, I guess, uh, intending to play queen d4 if I play g6, uh, which is really annoying. So, uh, how to react to this d5? e5 is a possibility after which I think white should be slightly better in general. But on the other hand, why not? Let's try it. Hmm. A4, well, I don't think it's a great idea. Now we have sort of uh, Nidor of pawn structure here, and um, this A4 is not very sound. Well, I think so, at least. I'm not a big expert here, but I have a feeling that I can simply play just A5. And you can hear my son as well, right now. So, he's somewhere around, screaming, I don't know why. Knight c3. Probably he wants inside, but, uh, well, son, I'm a bit busy. Sorry. I'll join you a bit later. <laughs> so, knight c3. Okay, so both sides have some weaknesses now. Uh, black has a problem with the b5 square. Black has... Uh, sorry, white has a problem with the b4 square. But white also has a problem with the c5, so it becomes a great uh, outpost for my knight later on. It's a question, uh, an interesting one, to continue in the style of Nidorf, like playing bishop e7, or to put this bishop on g7. <coughs> there are pros and cons, so if I put the bishop on g7, my d6 is not protected enough. I don't really like this. If my bishop is on e7, it's not very active if compared to uh, g7. Usually when I don't know what to do with a piece, I just delay its development. So let's play knight to a6 instead. Anyway, I'm going to occupy c5 sooner or later, or maybe b4, it depends. So this move can't be bad. Now, to b4 or to c5? Good question. Yeah, you know, I'm going to stick to this e7 position. Because g6 and bishop g7 is too slow, and if g6 there is h4. I don't have the knight on f6 anymore. So yeah, it's better to play this way, I guess.
Now, the knight to c5 or f5? f5 first, let's go. We're playing aggressive chess, right? So why not? Now I wanted to try this interesting move. I mean, I understand that we can e4, no questions, and that is not how the neither of usually played. Neither of pawn structure, I mean, but um, I think I will have a good possibility to actually control e4, and what is really cool here is that I limit the activity of the bishop c1. Instead of rook e1, I, I think knight to e4 was better. All right, now e4 is controlled by white sufficiently to put the knight there, so let's bring the knight to c5. This position looks great already. I just control everything, almost everything. All right, b3. Now it's time to be aggressive. Probably the bishop to f6, improving position of the bishop and intending to play e4. This stops white from playing bishop to a3 at least. And now, what to do now? e4, knight goes to d4, that's the problem. A slight problem, to be honest. So what about rook e8? Just preparing e4. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. So now e4 is possible. On the other hand, bishop on f5 will be hanging, so... Let's prepare this additionally. Bishop to g6 first. Who knows, maybe I'm going to put this bishop on h5 even. It's all about e4. All about e4. Maybe I should also play rook a to c8 to cover c7. And then e4 will be completely prepared, I guess. Bishop now uh, targets a5. This is a bit annoying. All right, I know it's not prepared, but let's go. Now, queen to d7, right? Yeah, queen to d7. Looks correct. But then queen goes to g4. What could be the best move here? Let's play bishop e5. This square became possible to occupy after I played e4, after all. So position is great for black, in fact. I control a lot, great advantage in space, but I have only 50 seconds, even slightly less. Um, h5 controlling g4, I think it is important. want to bring my queen to h4 or g5 at some point. And this is a good resource for white to protect himself, to bring the queen to g4, that's what I mean, that's why h5. Maybe I will sacrifice the exchange. So this knight c7 doesn't look very, very dangerous. Very complicated position, very complicated position. A lot of opportunities for both sides. For example, I can potentially continue my attack with the f3. I can also think of playing e3. It's really hard to calculate the things uh, to actually take into account all the details here, having only 40 seconds. But bringing the queen somewhere to h4, maybe to g5, then f3 looks very natural thing. As well as bringing the knight to d3 at some point, just getting this great strong pawn. Um, I can potentially uh, consider something like knight d7 as well, but I have to be careful about e6 square. That is also my weakness. And uh, once the knight is not on b6, knight e6 becomes possible because d5 square will be uh, empty and possible to occupy with the queen after exchange on e6. So who knows? 
Who knows? Queen to f6 is also an interesting possibility, but knight c7. So at the moment, my queen is somewhat pinned to c7 square. As I said before, I can potentially sacrifice the exchange, but who knows? Is it good or not? Okay, so queen e7 maybe to start with. To cover e6 additionally, that's what I mean. And then maybe rook to f8. Oh, blundered. Blundered that thing. And one more. Wow, a lot of blunders. So now I have to go crazy a bit, I think. So position remains unclear. A lot of hanging pieces for both sides. Lots of objects of attack of different sorts. Really hard to play in a time trouble. Okay, tactical shot, all right, nice, nice, uh, super crazy game, uh, lots of uh, missed opportunities, I think, for both sides, but, um, yeah, but interesting, I guess A4 is completely wrong, uh, and as far as I remember, Lawrence Trent uh, suggested, suggested um, taking on E6 here in this position. Maybe I'm wrong, but after that, bishop takes e6. <coughs> White currently has slightly better pawn structure. And uh, probably knight to c4 is even not a direct threat because of this check on a4. Who knows? Mm, it looks like that, at least. Uh, but I don't remember the recommendations of Lawrence here. So he said that uh, it leads to some sort of slight advantage for White here. But definitely taken on e5. Otherwise, uh, it's not justified. This move d5, strange one. Uh, nice trick behind this d5 move I wanted just to show you. If black uh, doesn't know this line and continues with this g6 automatic move for many other kind players, then queen goes to d4 and there is no chance to, s well, defend the rook the normal way because g7 is controlled by the queen, e5 is impossible because of d takes e6 and the rook is still hanging. And the thing is, uh, black has to do something ugly like rook to g8, which is very bad, or f6, which is even worse. So uh, that is the point behind d5. Uh, e5 kind of avoids these complications and black is uh, ready to play with slightly worse pawn structure. But I think it should be balanced position anyway after d takes e6. But after a4, well, I guess black is uh, already completely okay. So I played a5 because if I don't play a5, uh, white grabs the space. And it is a great version of knight or of pawn structure when you already have uh, this pawn on a5 grabbing the space. Then it is much easier to play b4 and c5 and so forth. That's why a5. After uh, knight to c3, knight to a6, bishop e2, bishop e7, here, there. Well, um, I played f4 which was the completely experimental move i understood uh during the game that it's not the way the knight of pawn structure is played usually but i wanted to try it so uh, i had a feeling that i can bring my bishop quickly to f5 and to fight for this e4 square in fact uh, as you see computer suggests knight to d7 and that's probably a correct way of playing it so this knight goes to c5 it will be then supported by the queen from c7 or maybe by pawn simply from b6 and this knight a6 goes to b4 very logical to have the knights on b4 and c5 two great outposts and black should be better so fantastic that i didn't even think about this knight to d7 maybe because uh, i used to play uh, neither of many years ago when i was a kid so 
don't have uh, proper experience nowadays. So I usually play e5 on the move number one. Um, <clears throat> so f4 was strange. Uh, rook to e1. I don't think it was the best move. I, I think that knight to e4 was better. I may be wrong. So the idea that if I play bishop f5, uh, there is a chance to play knight to d2 and to come up with the blockade. <clears throat> That's the thing. And knight on e4 is very important. Controlling this c5 as well. Uh, bishop is going to f3 or maybe even to g4. Exchanging light squared bishops here favors white for sure. Leaving black with this stupid uh, idiot on e7. So knight to e4 deserved attention. Not bishop to d3. Because in that case, uh, everything is justified. I just attack the bishop from c5 or b4 with the knight. And as we may notice, bishop is kind of pinned to c4. So it, it, in, this way, it, in this case, white just loses the time. Because uh, giving up such a bishop for a knight isn't a great idea. So let's say I play knight b4 or maybe knight c5. I don't know which one is better. Let's say this way. Maybe knight c5 to avoid c5 complications. So I'm going to take this one. And then bishop f5. And if there is no light square bishop, I don't care if there is the knight on e4. This blockade will be not that uh, dangerous. But the potential sacrifice on h3 with the attack will be super dangerous. So uh, if uh, bishop goes away here, then uh, bishop goes somewhere back to e2. Otherwise, I take the pawn. That's the thing. But knight to e4 was interesting. Um, the question from Chronic Student, Andre, why did you stop playing neither? Because... <clears throat> exactly of uh, this uh, overwhelming amount of theory that you should learn by heart if you play Sicilian in general and Nidorf in particular. So, um, Nidorf is played only against uh, bishop e2, right? But on the move number 6, white has so many different uh, opportunities. So, bishop g5, bishop c4, g3, h3, and so forth. Everything should be learned, especially the bishop g5 lines. And there is so much theory there that at some point I decided it's not worth doing it. Uh, at least uh, taking into account uh, the features of my playing style. I'm mainly a positional player. Um, so the question from the guy in chat here, uh, would an early bishop d3 have prevented any of those pawns from uh, crashing through? Well, early development of the bishop on d3 had the same flow. Uh, I can attack it with the knight immediately. That's the thing. So bishop is kind of pinned to this c4 pawn, and if it is on d3, I immediately play knight to b4 or knight to c5. But okay, let's go a bit uh, further uh, towards uh, what happened in the game. So again, here, knight d2, continue with the blockade was great, but bishop to f1 is another mistake. So now I played knight to c5. Maybe not the best move, by the way. I don't know why didn't I play knight to b4, actually. I probably blundered the fact that knight b4 creates a threat of knight c2, very annoying one. And was suggested in chat, I saw that. Uh, but here, knight to e4. In which case, what to do? How to continue this? Maybe knight to d7, simply. Intended knight to f6, or a bit later, knight to c5. Well, I don't know. Knight c5 also looked great. b3, bishop f6, now bishop to b2. And here it says e4 immediately. Yeah, I missed the fact that knight d4 is impossible. Wow, so many blunders. e4 was great, almost crushing. Because now knight doesn't go to d4. In this case, I just take it. And okay, I take on b3. There is nothing after queen to g7. White doesn't have enough resources and just, just win the material. Oh my god, I missed this completely. That e4 already here was possible. This forces the knight to the super ugly position on d2. And my god. There are so many different opportunities, I guess, including just simply protecting the pawn and uh, having the same like in the game, but with the knight on d2, not on d4. It's a big difference. Yeah, rook e8 was a mistake. Uh, white played knight to b5. I played bishop g6, bishop c3. And here it says that e4 is completely wrong because it loses the advantage. So it suggests knight to c8, maneuvering the knight and waiting a bit. Yeah, probably. Probably. E4 was too early. Okay, knight e4. Now, uh, bishop to e5 gave white a chance to play knight to e6. Okay, so what is the point if I take... Oh, bishop takes e5 first. Interesting thing. Takes, takes. So what is this? Uh, 
Oh, now I understand. So white sacrifices the material, but wants to play c5, followed by bishop c4. Great activation of the bishop. And black's uh, double pawn doesn't really mean anything here. Wow. Very fresh and very interesting idea to learn for all of us patsers. I mean, I'm patser as well because I didn't even consider such a thing. That's an interesting. Nice sacrifice. So black doesn't have the attack whatsoever, but white starts a great initiative. So c5, bishop c4. Wow. This will be epic. Yeah, knight to e6 here was great. Rook a2 was a mistake. Again, I could have prevented knight e6 by playing, say, queen to e7 or maybe bishop f7, but I didn't see that. Uh, once again, knight e6 was great. Now I play queen to e7. And again, knight e6 was possible. That's interesting. Interesting motive. And here it says I should have played uh, e3. But okay. <coughs> I just started blundering uh, everything. And here white blundered as well. So bishop to d4 was possible. Just to grab the knight with the idea of taking on b3 and taking on a5. Wow. Knight c7 is a big mistake. And I made another great mistake. I played f3. Just missed that. But, well, uh, to be fair, uh, to be honest, we both were in a severe time trouble here already. So no questions that we blundered a lot. And, well, in the next play, I managed to outplay my opponent a bit and so forth. Um... Yeah, interesting. So knight c7, bishop d4 was possible. Great game. A very complicated one. But I think the main idea here is that a4 is just not cool. And I think in general, taking on e6 is better than having the pawn on d5. Or at very least, if you want to keep the pawn on d5 here, after black plays e5. Uh, it's better to consider something like uh, immediate b3 to cover the pawn c4. And maybe to have the possibility to bring the bishop to b2. And then to do something like g3, bishop, g2. Uh, according to my experience, this g3, bishop, g2 is the best way to stop this f5, e5 pawns. Because in many cases, it's really hard for black to come up with a plan. f4 weakens e4 square. And if e4, then f4 is weak. Something like this. And uh, in many cases, bishop pawns, uh, g2 is a great guide to support c5 and this breakthrough in the center. And in any case, uh, you know... Uh, it's really hard to find a useful word for this bishop, so why not to put it on g2, right? Okay, thanks a lot, and let's go. Um, let's continue. Uh, forget the past, super cool nickname. Uh, so let's accept the challenge from forget the past. Yeah, it's time to forget this game and to focus on this one. Oh my goodness, black again. So, Lee Chess is just testing me today uh, because it forces me to search for attacking chances of playing with black this is really hard okay let's play b6 <coughs> against knight f3 by the way guys don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel you can find the shirt link here below my name bit.ly slash masteroski just go there subscribe and turn on notifications so that you will be notified every time when I go live. So you won't miss anything and you will be notified as well when I upload a new instructive chess video. There are a lot of there on my channel already and there will be a lot more. Uh, D4. Okay, bishop B7. Let's go. So the question is candidate master a real title? Uh, yeah, it's a real title. Uh, the other question, is it a really important title? G3. Knight to F6. Will be hard to attack here, you know. <clears throat> After all these moves, so White somehow managed to come up with a very solid setup. But what if we try this move? H5. h4 so please play dutch wow that's a great idea maybe in one of the games i will play dutch that's right that's an interesting way to attack what to do now so h4 is played which weakens g4 which gives me some attacking chances let's play d6 knight d7 
All right, d5 is a threat. My goodness. I may be position of the bastard here. But I'm provoking white, simply provoking white to do something active. Uh, let's try e5 now. Geo came. Hello. And there is the question if Gio is Giovanni or maybe Gio is a new guy watching this. In any case, you're welcome and I'm happy you joined the stream. And Mictal came as well. Nice. So, here I can consider taking with the knight, because bishop on g2 is hanging, right? So let's do it. Looks like an interesting attacking idea, exerting pressure on c4 and knight f3. Of course, after e5, I think d5 was correct, closing my bishop. And this gives me a chance to take here. Am I blundering something? I don't think so. Now I have a great bishop. And white doesn't have castling possibility anymore. Oh, that, that was the idea. Queen a4 check. Okay, but without the light squared bishop, it shouldn't meet that danger. So I can probably play c6 even. <coughs> so c6, if knight takes, then queen d7. But if I play c6... Probably rook g1 will be played. D takes c5, rook g2. This rook on g2 is super ugly. Uh, but I don't see clear way for me to develop my initiative there. So maybe just knight to d7. But after knight d7 there will be an exchange. On the other hand I will still have a pair of bishops. They know which one is better here, to be honest. After knight d7, knight c6 should be also considered... Well, you know, it feels like c6 is better. So both pieces are under attack. I know that c6 is potentially risky because my bishop is short of moves, short of space. But since the knight is still hanging on e5 and the rook on h1, I think at the very least... I'll have a chance to do what? Just to take the knight if the bishop is attacked. That's why I do that. And knight to c6, well, isn't it a blunder? I mean, I can play queen d7 now. And the guys are hanging. I mean, is there a clearer way to protect both? No, I didn't think so. There is a trick like knight to d5 intended knight to c7. But I think after knight d5, I will just take first on d5 with the knight. And then I will take that rook and so forth. Yeah, knight c6 is a mistake, I guess. <clears throat> Maybe I'm wrong and blundering something terrible, but I don't think so. Probably uh, white forgot that uh, bishop actually controls c6 as well. On the other hand, if white didn't see the bishop on g2 control on c6, why didn't he capture it on c6 with a queen? So probably uh, white just underestimated my intermediate move queen to d7. Zwischen took intermezzo. So what to do, I have no idea. I don't see a good move for white. I mean. So if knight goes away, I just take the queen first, and then take the rook on h1. If rook goes away, I just take the knight with the bishop. And it's over. 
Yeah, knight to d5, there is a trick. Knight c7 is a threat, potentially. If I take with the queen, knight just jumps somewhere with the discovery. Maybe it's not that dangerous. But I have a feeling that it's better for me to avoid it, if I can. So taking on d5 first, taking on h1 looks just good enough. So let's do it. By the way, it's even better potentially just to take on d5 now with a bishop, because the knight on c6 will be still attacked, as well as the rook on h1. And potential problem with taking the rook is that white can play f3, bury my bishop there on h1, and there will be a threat of queen e4, potentially annoying, so this knight remains on c6, and even being the rook down, white will have some compensation, I think. So yeah, I will take on d5. I guess it's still possible and great. <coughs> and I think f3 immediately instead of knight d5 was, was interesting. That was suggested, by the way, in chat. That was probably cool. So now I'm winning with the extra minor piece. And there are lots of different factors saying that I should be winning here. So queen h3 looks great. Pretty much straightforward. <coughs> Creating a sort of a checkmate. And uh, what? What was the point? I actually expected f3 to take <coughs> g3 pawn, sorry. <clears throat> All right, should be still winning, right? Should be still winning. What if I just keep on playing attacking chess like bishop e7, queen g7, castling lawn, then taking on h4, something like this, but it's not serious, okay? So I have extra minor piece. I no longer need uh, playing this style, right? I'll just keep developing my pieces, protecting weaknesses and uh, converting extra material. I mean, why should I take risks? It's absolutely stupid. More extra material, even more after this E5 move. It's time to resign. Okay, so let's have a look at what happened in this game, uh, I played super dubious uh, setup, controlling d5, not sufficiently, uh, just playing this h5 and then d6, super awful, sorry, super awful, c4, correct, knight d7, d5 right now was great, knight to c3 was absolutely playable, and after e5, just play d5, look at this stupid bishop on b7, uh, white has much more space here, so it's just a typical advantage in space. My bishop on f8 uh, is uh, limited with own pawns. Uh, there is no clear possibility now for black to come up with this plan, which is typical for this pawn structure, because I already played h5, which weakens g5 a lot. So everything says white has just a perfect version of this typical pawn structure, which is typical for many different openings, including King's Indian defense. Sometimes it uh, appears um, there, I mean, pawns d6, e5 against e4, c4, d5. Uh, some lines of Queen's Indian defense and uh, Nimtzu Indian and so forth. So black has just awful position here. e5 gives me a chance to, I mean, taking on e5 gives me a chance to actually come up with some sort of active play. Uh, but here, I believe that since knight to c4 isn't a threat because of queen a4 check, it was simply possible to play this castling. And uh, after uh, I take on f3, because knight c4 leads to queen a4 and I'm down a piece, right? After I take on f3, uh, why can consider taking with the bishop, exchanging light square bishops, and my light squares will be uh, very weak as well as taking with the pawn, uh, opening the e-file. I guess taking with the bishop looks great. So takes, takes, okay, doubled pawns, but my bishop is very bad. Much worse than that one on c1. And one has very clear plan of just uh, bring the queen to a4, maybe even to c6, if it is possible, uh, to put the knight on d5, and after this exchange, well, the c-file will be open, the c6 will be super weak, and so forth. So really simple means, and uh, white should be slightly better, at very least. 
Um, Yannick says we need more <coughs> endgame videos. Uh, yeah, probably. I, I, I have in mind, by the way, to come up with some series on that <coughs> topic. Okay, just a set of different topics because endgame is just super, super uh, great topic. Um, includes a lot of different material to show and to explain. So... Let us continue. By the way, Yannick, you can check some of uh, my <coughs> videos in my YouTube channel uh, dedicated to studies. Uh, there is a list which is called Learn from Chess Studies. So positions there are endgame type. That's the thing. Let us continue. All right. So what do we have here? What do we have here? Uh, Dimitrov Igor. Let's play. I think his challenge is here uh, for a long, long time already. And e4. And I'm still playing with black. What's wrong with this website? What's wrong with... Uh, what's wrong with this website today? I mean, in general, it's just great. But today, it's giving me just uh, black pieces. My God. It's really hard. To play aggressively. Another opening I don't really play. I don't really like. <laughs> Which black, but what, what can I do? I should attack. I, su I should search for attacking possibilities. Uh, let's take with the knight. Knight to f3. Let's play g6. <clears throat> All right, so d4 is protected. Um, I can potentially exert some pressure on d4 pawn. That is basically the plan here, just to bring the bishop to g4 uh, to attack d4. Let's go. Question, can you explain why I play differently against stronger players? What do you mean? You play stronger or weaker? The question. And another question uh, about the previous game: Would you mind? Uh, would you be fine with exchanging queens? Well, it depends on concrete, concrete situation. I think in general I would avoid exchanging queens because with the queen it's easier to exert some pressure on c7, c6, and so forth. Which white? I mean. All right. This gives me a chance to take on f3. By the way, is it possible or not? Because feels like white forgot about this pawn, so I already played c6. So bishop f3 doesn't attack b7, which means white has a not very pleasant choice now. Because if bishop takes, I just grab the pawn on c4, which is a very important one, and at the same time I attack the bishop there. And if g takes f3, wow, I have some chances to attack, which is great. So let's castle. Akris says weaker against stronger players. Maybe uh, you just respect your stronger opponents a lot. Just stop respecting them and just beat them. That's a good idea, I guess. How to bring my pieces to the attack? So first I need my knight b8 to be developed somehow. I guess there is an interesting idea of bringing it to e6 even. Is it a good square for the knight? Or maybe it's better just to have it somewhere on h5 or something. Oh, that's a hard choice. So what is my plan? Have no idea. Let's play knight d7. I don't think that this knight a6, knight c7 and potentially e6 could have been a great idea. Definitely not the best one. 
Now a5 would be weakening of the position, I think, if I play a5 here. Taking into account white has pair of bishops after position becomes open here. I have a lot of weaknesses, so probably it's better for me to stick to just maneuvering towards white's king. So knight f6 and let's go. Bishop h6, oh right, it's another blunder, I think. I can take the bishop and take on d4. And this should be just decisive. Decisive advantage for black. The question, Andre, do you think King's Indian attack is enough or should I study some main line? Well, it depends on your results and uh, actually, I think if this works, good for you. In the sense of results, just keep on playing until it stops uh, bringing you uh, the satisfaction. Uh, in the sense of learning chess in general, if you want to improve, I would recommend learning something uh, more uh, conventional. So something like, I don't know, main lines, right? Because uh, playing main lines can give you an opportunity to play super complicated positions in a strategic sense. And this is exactly where improvement starts, when you struggle. <laughs> So, rook to d1, what to do? Uh, queen to e5 is a great move. Queen to c5 is also cool. Let's put the queen on c5. I like this square. It's not that vulnerable here. It controls b4. It exerts some pressure on f2. It protects e7. It's surrounded by other pawns and pieces. Everything looks great here for black. <coughs> Queen e3. Hmm. And that's a question. What to do now? Just put the queen on b4. Looks like an interesting idea, although looking a bit dangerous because my queen is somewhat misplaced there. I mean, it's not misplaced, it's a bit limited. That's what I mean. Or just play knight to d7 here. I think knight to d7 should be played. Rook d7 I just take with the knight, so it's nothing. And if queen takes queen, okay, knight takes, and uh, even after b4 I'm fine because my knight goes to e6 and finally to f4. So great outpost. Should be a good maneuver. Okay. Now I just take. Or maybe queen e3 first. Queen e3 first. If I take on e4, rook takes d7, potentially annoying. So I'm going to fix the pawn structure, limit the activity of this guy instead. Knight is better than the bishop here, I have a feeling, because the pawn structure is much better for the knight. Bishop doesn't have really objects of attack. Um, okay. B6, just uh, putting pawns on dark squares, preventing bishop from attacking me. Um, maybe something like g5 was slightly more accurate. Let's play g5, preventing f4. Again, fixing pawns on uh, correct squares, squares of correct color, I mean. Uh, this one will be captured, because it leads to... Uh, leads to weakening of the pawn structure even more. But maybe I slightly underestimate White's activity here. This can be an issue. Activity of the Rook, I mean, but it should be resolved somehow. Okay, I will take. This gives me a chance to activate the Rook with the tempo. And now it should be absolutely winning. All right. Have only 30 seconds, so should be faster. But it's lost completely for white. So I should be fine converting it. Q4 
Martin is far away, so there is no chance for White to survive it. <clears throat> but the only problem is the time, of course. Seventeen seconds only on the clock. Now it should be enough. Now I'm just promoting my pawn and then queen a4, rook b5, queen a6, rook b7, queen a8. Lost. All right. So let's have a look at the analysis board. Let's have a look at the analysis board. And uh, understand what happened. Of course, everything happened here after I played bishop g4. <coughs> I created a direct threat of just taking on f3. Uh, so if you want to avoid damaging your pawn structure, you should consider something like b3 protecting the pawn. Uh, if you don't want to uh, think about this at all, uh, you should consider playing h3. I think after c6, the move I made, h3 makes sense. So you also make a pawn move and it is quite useful because you prevent this bishop g4. Now you don't have to think of d4 pawn, c4 is also protected very nice way and uh, well, I have problems with finding a good square for my bishop. Of course, after this, and especially after this, black is doing very well. Yeah, you have pair of bishops, but position is still closed, uh, and it's not that easy to open it up. Um, and your king now looks really, really bad. So I just developed the knight, and here there was just a decisive blunder. So after this one, queen takes on d4. And in addition to all these advantages, I have extra pawn, right? and you have no chances, your bishop is very bad, but probably my conversion wasn't the uh, ideal one. So here, let's say I could have captured immediately, but okay, I played knight d7, knight e4, queen e3 takes here a c5. Uh, that was okay, that was okay. After knight f6, knight f6, probably somewhere here, I started playing not very convincing chess. Uh, so exchanging one rook was probably all right. Um, but then uh, something simple like Probably bringing the king to e8 and playing rook d8 should have been um, played instead of what I started doing. Also an interesting idea was uh, to play a5 here. Looks strange a bit, uh, but I have in mind just playing rook to a6 and rook to b6, activating the rook this way. But again, uh, to, to perform this plan uh, normally, I need the king somewhere here to prevent this check, or maybe to have the king somewhere on e8. I'm not sure if I am in time to perform this plan. So who knows, but definitely uh, playing something like b6, g5 wasn't the great way of uh, playing this in general. So knight takes c4 takes, well, probably, probably it was still okay. I mean, uh, black has extra pawn, but there are some technical problems uh, taken into account that my rook is passive here. After king d6, I wanted to do what? To play e6 and then king to e5, having this great king on e5 where after my rook is free to maneuver because I have some ideas of playing g4 and then grabbing the pawn. So probably I would have sacrificed the pawn on a7 at some point and just focused on the um, king side, which is quite delicious for black's pieces here. They are well coordinated and the pawn structure is much better. All right, interesting. <clears throat> so Claudel says, Andre, thanks for the stream. You should think about streaming chess. Um, well, Fisher Random. Uh, would you agree it's a better way to learn chess without the craziness of knowing the openings by heart? Yeah, I had this idea in mind. In fact, uh, I'm not that bad in playing Fisher Random, uh, to be honest. Uh, when I was a kid and I played Fisher Random, I managed to beat a lot of uh, well-known grandmasters. And uh, what is symptomatic, uh, they were all uh, well-known theoreticians. So just excluding the theory uh, actually gave me a great chance, a great advantage of just beating them. So it's a nice idea, in fact, nice idea uh, to try uh, to do some streams dedicated to chess uh, 960. So I would consider it for sure. So no answer for positional chess, uh, Stefan. The thing is that uh, it's really hard to uh, say something uh, briefly about positional chess, but uh, positional chess is about understanding the power of your pieces and understanding the power of opponent's pieces, as well as understanding the drawbacks of your pieces 
and drawbacks of opponent's pieces, not only statically, but also dynamically. So you have to uh, analyze position from this point of view. So uh, to understand what is going on right now, so what is static, what is dynamic, to understand the perspectives of changing the things, especially the pawn structure, and to base your decisions uh, on this analysis. So that is the core of positional chess, in my opinion, all right? Um, the rest is just a technique, knowing patterns, knowing uh, some, I don't know, typical plans and so forth. All right. All right, let us continue. Let us continue and play Zwei Hosex. Here we go. And white pieces. Isn't it nice? Isn't it nice, my friend? Let's go. A6, all right. So what if... Okay, no what ifs. Let's play D4. Let's play uh, like principal chess. A4. Undermining, undermining the pawn. So what about Mark? Can you hear him well? Because even despite my problems with my health, I can hear him really good now. He's very loud. E6 gives me a chance to grab the pawn. Can I do it? Just A, B5. Let's do it. Question. Andre, what's your favorite YouTube chess channel? My own. <laughs> I think <coughs> you expected this question, this answer to this question. Well, to be honest, I almost never ever watch other YouTubers. But if I do, I look at uh, Niklas Huschenbet's videos sometimes. And uh, probably sometimes uh, Chess24 videos as well. All right. All right, what about taking the pawn? I wanted to take the pawn. Let's go. So sometimes Nicholas, by the way, analyzes his own games uh, in a very good way. So since he's a gr good grandmaster, it's really useful for me as well. So I try to look at his uh, games from time to time. All right, C3. So I try to watch something that makes me better. So if I understand that, well, this content helps me improve, I watch it. But there is not so much uh, qualitative content for international masters, let's say, on YouTube. <clears throat> what is going on here? So I'm not very focused, but I have a feeling that I can play before now, just fixing this pawn on c6. It's not really an aggressive play, I mean, because I just won a pawn uh, too early. Uh, but I still have some chances to come up with the attack on the king side, like in a normal French defense. So if we don't pay attention to the queen side, uh, the rest of the board looks like a French defense, right? So let's go f4 and play f5 at some point. Yeah, by the way, sometimes I watch some uh, live streams of Lawrence Trent because, uh, first of all, he's my buddy. 
<laughs> Second of all, uh, he's nice uh, and very interesting player and a good personality. And sometimes he comes up with a nice uh, set of uh, opening ideas, which can be also quite useful. So knight to d7. Can I just play f5 right away? Yeah, I think I can. Let's do it. So this bishop on a8 is like, I wanted to say typical French bishop, but uh, you hardly ever see the uh, bishop on a8 in French defense. So it is a super French bishop. It's a super ugly, I mean. To take here or just to play knight at g3? Let's go for attack. I want to attack. Where is my attack? After bishop f5, there is no attack. After knight g3, there is a potential of sacrificing something. And this is going to be interesting. Evgeny Muir is a good guy. I follow his commentary. This is another buddy of mine. My good friend. Eugen Muroshnichenko. Yeah, he's great, of course. He's super cool grandmaster. And also a great person. F4. Uh, let's take it. With the bishop developing the piece at the same time. Question, how can one improve his chess when you are living in a country with no real written material for it? Uh, learn English <laughs> and read English books. And there is just plenty of possibilities to get the access to written materials on the internet. Some, I don't know, electronic versions, for example, Forward Chess app. There you can uh, get all the books from, let's say, Quality Chess in uh, the uh, electronic version of them, I mean. Rook goes away from the F files, you know, F7 is potentially weak. But knight is going to occupy f8, protecting h7. Feels like a sacrifice somewhere, but... Doesn't feel like I'm ready. Maybe because I'm not developed. So let's go. And develop the rest of the pieces. <coughs> And now say knight to f5 looks <coughs> very promising. Exerting pressure on this. All right, let's bring the queen to action. This guy is out of play, so it can't be a good position for black. Oh, f6. Super dubious. <coughs> Let's play h4 and queen g7 checkmate. Here it is. Checkmate. Another checkmate. So lots, lots of checkmates today. Nice. 
But that was something strange. I mean, uh, I played a4 with the simple intention of taking on b5. Okay, bishop b7 was a counterattack. I played f3. But after e6, come on, I can take the pawn. I think there is no play. I mean, a b5 takes, takes, bishop b5, something like bishop b4 can be considered, but it's not serious. So I just take, and after queen h4, I'm not forced to play g3 whatsoever. I can bring my king to d2, I can play king to f1. In both cases, I have just extra minor piece for no compensation. So maybe uh, if black wants to sacrifice the bishop this way, it's better to do this right now, uh, because I don't have king f1 at least, but still, should be just winning for white. After king d2, takes some like knight to f3, come on. Time to resign. So white is much better developed potentially because this queen will be vulnerable. I will play some like knight to c3, a bishop to d3 and so forth. So there is no attack. There is no resources to attack me, I mean. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, b4 or b takes a4. I think b4 is logical. So grabbing some space, uh, depriving my knight of c3 square. It's a typical thing. And only then, e6, c5, d5. So typical play uh, that you have probably prepared so I host x for this game. So, very typical thing. Um, and you were prepared for d4, not e4. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, okay, I'll play d4 next time 100%. So, uh, your preparation uh, will be uh, actually embody it in one of the games next time, all right? Andre, I thought about the technique of to master chess without a vast knowledge. Well, if you are alpha zero, probably you have a chance, I guess. <laughs> but without vast knowledge, it's impossible. Because Vast knowledge is actually the main source of patterns that you recognize. And recognizing patterns is one of the most important parts of calculation and decision making in general. So without recognizing patterns, you will spend enormous time to calculate the things. And sometimes calculation isn't the only thing to help you make a decision. So you need to recognize, for example, just a positional pattern. Like in this position, this plan should be good and you just save a lot of time on calculating nonsense, something like this. So, without knowledge, no. I mean, unless you are artificial intelligence guy. <laughs> so, if you are an artificial intelligence being, uh, then you can learn yourself. But if you're a human being, I think knowledge is the only way, and in addition to that, skills, okay? So the rest of the game here, after I took the pawn, I think wasn't that uh, really uh, inspiring. But one thing I wanted to to tell uh, you. So after castling, castling, and c3, I guess d5, well, first c6, then d5 is a completely wrong direction. Instead of doing that, you should have tried uh, to muddy the waters with uh, probably knight to e8 and something like f7, f5. Trying to activate that guy, a8, because without that, it will be really hard to achieve anything. So after I had this position already, I understood it, it, it just absolutely win whatever happens here, all right? So the rest was just technique. Uh, the only interesting thing here was after f5, e f5, of course, bishop f5 is the, the best move, but I played knight g3 intending to sacrifice something after g6, but I'm not sure it was uh, like that winning. So I wanted to take on f5, maybe, with the knight. g f5, now bishop f5, intending queen to h5 with a crushing attack. Uh, so let's see, maybe maybe black is alright after this, but no, I don't believe in this position anymore. <laughs> so after bishop h7, king, queen, no, I will crush black, really. So, should be like... Something like this. And now, I don't know, rook somewhere to f3 or to f5 with a checkmate very soon. Yeah, it's not it's not correct to give white such an initiative. Maybe there is an accurate defense, but, well, hard to believe. Uh, why, by the way? Because of these guys. So look, they are far away. They don't take part in the defense. These guys are limited. So I sacrifice only one piece here. 
then I sacrifice another one. But since you have completely uh, disorientated guys here, minor pieces, bishop e7, knight e7, knight b6, bishop a8, it means, well, even having only queen and the rook in the attack, and potentially the bishop, which is ready to join it at any moment, uh, I just crash black here with some sacrifices, okay? So... I have a rule if a position is okay after 3-5 move calculation along the uh, main line, the position should be viable. Yeah, but there is a question, what is the main line? <laughs> it's not that easy to understand what is the main line. There is a trick. All right, never mind, let's continue. And by the way, since I'm reading uh, the comments of Acris, let's play Acris. Looks like very decent player and white pieces. Thank you, Lee Chess white pieces again uh e4 let's keep on playing active chess all right this way let's try 92 looks strange i know but my idea <clears throat> is to play this and g4. That's why knight on e2, because after bishop gets to g2, taking this pawn on g4, uh, sorry, having this pawn on g4 means I want to attack and the knight will be much more useful on g3 square. Okay, knight to d7, immediately going away. Interesting idea. All right, let's castle and play f4 as soon as possible to try to actually fight against this bishop because now I have some ideas connected with the g5 move. Taking on d4, all right, let's take with the knight. Intending to occupy this f5 square. Nice pawns, right? Very active, very aggressive, just according to our topic. Queen to b6. So to play king h1 or forget about it and play bishop to e3, uh, just invest in some material to win in the time. I don't think it's needed really because I'm better developed here. I don't need even better development right now. D6 is weak, so I'm going to play knight f5. Uh, so let's just play king h1. Going away, I have a threat of playing g5 trap in the guy here. I have a threat of knight f5. I think my position is already quite promising. Knight a6. So what about g5? Just trapping the bishop. Isn't it winning? All right, it's not trapping because there is g3 square, but still it looks very, very annoying for black at least. Let's try this move. Anyway, it's a programmatic push. In this particular case, it is also connected with playing against this bishop h4. And now knight f5 traps the bishop, but f takes g5. Well, it's not that simple. But I take on g5 again, and uh, bishop from c1 protect g5, and this bishop has only f2 square. But it still has this square. Well, Interesting. So maybe queen to g4 instead, fg5 then, but no, this actually drops the knight. There is also a possibility to play knight to e6 now, which also looks very promising. I don't know which one is better here. So many interesting possibilities. Wow. Let's play this knight f5. I don't think it's, it is bad to start with. So anyway, my knight is needed there. 
Now there are plenty of different moves. Knight e7, queen h5. Everything is super uh, attractive. But let's take, simply take here. Opening the f file, again attacking the bishop. Forcing the bishop to f2, only square. At the very least I can take on d6, I think. At the very least. But there was also an idea of just attacking the bishop from uh, e2 with the queen and then knight e7 check taking the rook on f8. But there is knight d7 protecting it. Well, strange that uh, black gave me a chance to take it simply. So bishop f2 was the only chance, I guess. Now I simply have extra minor piece and no compensation whatsoever. Let's come back to knight f5 square. Takes with a pawn. I have nice pawns here. Okay, just f6. Why not? <coughs> oh. Bringing the bishop to g7. Now I have the rook. It's the extra rook. Okay. Bring the knight to the attack. Oh, there was a nice thing. Rook f2, queen f2, and bishop e3 trapping the queen. Very typical one, by the way. Yeah, very nice. Thank you, Omkar, for telling me that. This really changes everything, so just rook f2, bishop b3, trap, and the queen. Correct. I will show you this uh, right now, guys. So, um, knight f5, fg5, fg5. The bishop is attacked, and if it goes here, we just take it. After queen f2, we just play bishop e3, and the queen is trapped. Super cool. Home card. By the way, it's a typical idea, but I somehow forgot about it. Because uh, I didn't play this position. I haven't played this position for a long, long time, I guess. Yeah, it's lost. Just right away. So bishop f2 doesn't work, which means after knight f5, the bishop is simply trapped. Nice tactics. Great. Um, question. Andre, do you know if there is a translated version of the Slavin chess course? Uh, I hear it's very good, but I can only find the Russian version. Um, have no idea. Uh, I mean, I don't know the quality of this course. Uh, even in Russian, I didn't, I didn't read it. So, at the same time, I have no idea if there is a translation. Sorry, I have no answer to this question. <coughs> so, uh, what was wrong? I'm not sure that this plan of uh, putting the bishop on h4 is really good. At least, if you put the bishop on h4, uh, probably it makes sense to have the rook on h8. So, I can imagine playing something like knight to d7 right now. And if I play g4, you can put the bishop on h4, you can also just consider playing h5. This makes sense. So you control this squares and I can't really play g5, which means I'm potentially in sort of trouble here with the pawn structure. But of course, if you play knight d7 here, I will probably uh, don't play g4. I will stick to g3 first, then bishop g2, castling, and at a proper moment, I will play g4. But in this case, well, this h3 looks like a waste of time. On the other hand, you also play knight d7, not the best position for this knight, and it's not clear where to put this one. Uh, but, well, already castling and then bringing the bishop to h4 looks interesting, but in my opinion, not very, not very sound. Uh, yeah, after f4, white is cool. I mean, white achieves exactly what he wants in this position. And there is also additional idea of g4, g5 trapping the bishop at some point. Okay. <clears throat> so, question from a chronic student. Anyone tried Ms. Gen Aman, of course? Well, some of my students tried. <laughs> and it's not that bad, fairly. So, let's go further. And play some more games. Uh, let's play Miktal. 
Let's attack Mr. Tan. <laughs> D4. All right, how to attack this one? Let's play G6. And C5. Here we go. And a4, well, super aggressive, super aggressive. What about e5 here? It looks strange, I know, because uh, I actually limit my own bishop. At the same time, I just uh, uh, try to grab some space. That's the idea. So maybe f5 now. Just continuing this aggressive play. Let's do it. Takes f5. Takes with a pawn, of course. To control the center response. And to be ready just to push them at the proper moment when the development is complete. <coughs> okay. I think I will achieve something if instead of uh, putting my knight on f6, which is typical, I will play 97 knight g6. So let's play, let's try it. And knight at g6. I control f4 additionally, which could be help. Full <laughs> at some point. All right, now mm, to exchange the bishop or not? Good question. Not that sure. Moreover, if I play bishop f6, there is bishop h6. Also, not clear if it is good for me, but all right, I will probably keep my dark squared bishop on the board because potentially there can be also attack against b2. And in general, along this diagonal h8, a1, so this bishop may be very, very aggressive and active. <coughs> I don't think taking on f5 was a correct strategy. It justifies black's play, in my opinion. <coughs> Most likely, I can consider playing something like f4 now, trying to trap the bishop again. Um, at the very least, it will be very, very uh, annoying for white, but the knight will come to e4, attacking f6. And the bishop is not necessarily that easily trapped there. So it go, we'll go to h4, which is ugly, but it is still playable, still possible to play this. On the other hand, it may be trapped very soon after that. Not sure. F4 looks very tempting. But then bishop d3 should be considered as well, so after that I can't even play h6. Alright, let's forget about this uh, materialistic, too materialistic thinking and just play positional chess. Still aggressive. But positional. What language is Mark speaking at the moment? The language of aliens, Gramlik student. Mainly. At least I don't know the language he speaks. <laughs> Can't recognize it. Cannot identify it.
So it's very tempting to bring the knight to g5, no questions. Uh, but I'm not sure that uh, it is that dangerous. So I'll bring my knight to f6 simply and... Uh, okay. I can live with this. Now, uh, is there a threat? Mm. Even if there is a threat, I don't see it. After queen g5, so everything looks absolutely protected. Maybe just knight to h4, something like this. Yeah. It may be potentially not very pleasant. Does it make sense for me just to start with h6 now? What if I just play h6? Where the queen goes? Probably back. Yeah, let's let's attack the queen. And this one is strange, because now I have knight to f6, f5 is protected. And the queen is forced to h3, where after I will play f4. And the queen is trapped, looks like that. If I'm not stupid and super blind, I think f4 just wins the queen. Well, okay, g4 is possible, obviously, but come on. It's just deadly lost for white. <clears throat> so, my friends, G4 is the only move for sure. I don't know what to think here. Yeah. Just only move. Now. Everything looks super tempting. To take on g4 with the bishop. To take on g4 with the knight. h5. I actually wanted to play h5 here. To have the pawn on g4. This looks even stronger than anything else. Now let's try this move. I guess it's a good time for a some little treatment helping my throat. Okay, H takes G four, right? Super winning. Yeah, h5 was probably the best move, <clears throat> because this uh, doesn't give white a chance to uh, utilize the open uh, g-file anyhow. And uh, without the open g-file, of course, having such a bad pawn structure and being material down uh, equals to an absolutely lo losing position. So let's have a look at this. Again, I played in a very dubious style. Uh, right from the opening. So first here, I think uh, d takes e6 maybe deserves some attention if you are into playing against uh, weaknesses like d6. But you should be careful in this case. Um, in many cases, I can just sacrifice d6. But what is great here is that I get the access to this super great uh, outpost on d4. And if my knight is there, I think it will compensate any material loss. So knight to f3 was probably correct. There is also a good idea just to, um, again, play g3, bishop, g2, or simply to start with bishop to d3. Because in this case, your queen is here, and if I play f5, you can take it, and there is a big difference. Now you have queen h5 check. So I can't play f5, which means that probably I have to spend the time on knight e7 here, in which case you can try this move. Also interesting try to attack, so... If this one, then probably you can consider knight e2 followed by f4. You can do this 
actually without even playing h4. So just knight e2. If I play f5, you just play f4, castles, and it's extremely complicated play. But uh, white should be at least, at very, very least, not worse. So knight f3 is a bit passive, but still playable. Here, again, instead of taking on f5, I would consider simple uh, knight to d2 or maybe bishop to d3. So white's advantage is the advantage in space mainly. And taking on f5, you help me uh, finding, <coughs> sorry, great squares and perspectives for my pieces. Doesn't feel like it is a great idea in general. So ef5, gf5. At least uh, something like knight to g5 should have been played here to justify your capture. Now after knight f6, knight to e6, grabbing my bishop. Okay, sacrificing the pawn maybe. Maybe not even sacrificing, by the way. Because if I play something like queen e7 right now, there is knight d5. Yeah, maybe that was interesting, by the way, you know. Um, typical idea, by the way. So bishop b2 is just too passive. Knight to e7. Now I control d5 sufficiently, but still knight g5, knight e6 was great. You just chose completely wrong direction. So you, you put the bishop on g5, but there is nothing to do with the bishop on g5. That's the thing, I guess. After queen c1, castles, bishop to h6. All right. What has nothing, I guess. Uh, so this h4, which was suggested by Omkar, if I'm not um, mistaken. I can just play knight to f4. It looks like black solved all the problems and just enjoys the play, having strong center and much more active pieces. Then another knight goes to f6, king hides on h8, rook to g8. <coughs> so on, so forth. Great position for black, I mean. What's the name of the opening you just played? No idea. I was playing like... Uh, Something close to uh, old Benoni, I guess. But not the uh, common order of moves. All right. Let's go to the next challenger. Let's play three minutes just for fun. Against uh, the guy rated 2500. It's very, very challenging game. Uh, probably I'll be crushed. But let's try at least. Right? Um, let's do the same. So just look how my opponent develops his pieces. And how he plays in general. Because I think this guy should be quite prepared and should play just good chess. Grabbing the bishop, which is nice. Now I have, well, enough space for my pieces, which I find quite helpful. Now the question how to develop my pieces. There are different systems of doing it. Let's play queen a5. I guess it's something very typical for this pawn structure. So I'm going to bring my rook to c8. And then if necessary I'll come back to d8 with a queen. So I exert some pressure on c4. Thinking of playing b7, b5 at some point. Maybe now, maybe slightly later. For example, is b5 possible here? Mm, not that sure. All right, what can I do in addition? I can try something like this. So now I think it's time to come back because there are some shreds of playing knight to d5 or something. White is still enjoying the space here. 
So I think uh, it's a good idea just to simplify a position a bit. When there is a lack of space, it's usually uh, great just to exchange several pieces to have enough space for the rest of the guys, I mean. I guess black should be completely safe here. Unless I blunder or something, it should be all right. Unfortunately, I can't take on d4 now because queen c8 is already check. I mean, it's just a dead draw after that. But, okay. Let's try to attack. It's still possible to come up with something active, I guess. Uh, after all, I have pair of bishops, right? And if uh, position becomes open, um, I actually have some chances. At least it feels like that. Mm. But it's not that simple. To open this position up. My opponent is not against the draw. Um, let's save the bishop for a while. Now, let's say bishop b5. Just want to provoke some weaknesses in white's camp, which is not simple. If white doesn't do it. What about this check now? All right, and bringing the bishop to d2 maybe, but it doesn't give me anything, I think. But at least it's some sort of activation, right? It feels like more active position. Now something like this, controlling more. And maybe I'm ready to play d5 even now. e d5, e d5, d4, d3, d2, something like this. So bishops look... Quite cool now. My bishops looks look very cool. Let's do this. All right. Now bishop to d3, which is what I wanted to try. To attack b1. All right, bishop here. Mm, of course, I don't want to exchange my dark squid bishop but maybe i'm forced sort of that but okay let's go away although i don't like this bishop a5 retreat now king e6 at least i still have pair of bishops and they control a lot and this pawn on d5 is a passed pawn after all okay so to take or to play h4 let's play h4 this looks like an interesting try as well this pawn can be potentially also very annoying for white. Bishop to c1. Uh, bishop to c5. How to attack all this? Let's play this way. All right. All right. Centralizing, and now d4. Um, bishop to c1. Still controlling a lot. Yeah, this centralization is something that should be decisive. Okay, now I win the pawn, and this position should be technically winning. I won on time, but, well, it was already quite, quite good. Okay, yeah, nice game. Interesting one. I think white just, uh, well allowed me to exchange lots of pieces. Just lots of pieces were exchanged, which is quite good uh, for the situation when you have uh, not so much space, I mean. The rest was just to, uh, yeah, to convert pair of bishops. That's what I say. So, first of all, I didn't understand the idea behind giving me a chance to grab that bishop. I know this bishop is not so cool. But it's not about exchanging the bishop for the knight. It's about um, giving me a chance to play with three minor pieces here in the limited position. So I guess bishop to e2 was better from a positional point of view because my knight is struggling now. So I wanted to try something like this. 
Mm, and yeah, you may argue that, okay, what about exchanging this knight for this bishop, but this looks better, I mean. And uh, if white wants, it's possible to avoid this exchange as well. Just to put the knight on b3 maybe, then castle him, then f4, one of possible plans. I personally appreciate this approach, just uh, having as many pieces on the board as possible because you have the advantage in space. Okay. And somewhere here, I think I was already already fine. Yeah, so here I felt my position should be should be should be good, All right? Because pair of bishops, uh, typical end game stage, uh, typical sorry uh, end game case for this uh, advantage. So I gradually force some weakening and well, just attack. And that's the idea. You shouldn't have to take uh, the queen. Uh, bishop takes knight. Yeah, but there is queen c8 check. Uh, I was, uh, by the way, uh, about to take the knight uh, during the game, but I clearly understood that after bishop takes d4, there is intermediate queen c8, and after bishop d4, it's just a dead draw. Okay? So. And there was no other possibility for me to take the queen, so only here. And before, I don't know what is before, she takes, takes, queen c2, bishop, yeah, queen c2 happened exactly here. So bishop d4, queen c8, check. Nope, no problems, Igor, no problems. Um, all right, so let's play one more. Let's play one more game. I don't know whom to play here. But let's play mc Baugefühl. Wow. So what this Balkifil tells you, my friend? Are you gonna win or what? C4. All right. E5. So against this, black can play a fairly active chess, usually, against English opening, I mean. <clears throat> so let's try it. D4. E4. So by the way, guys, uh, what about uh, super chats? I think the previous game was quite great in the sense of deserving a super chat from somebody. Because a single super chatter uh, today is uh, Twihos X. It's time to compete with Twihos X. I mean, super chat me, come on. All your chats are great, but super chats are super chats. You know what I mean. Bishop g5, yeah, it's a typical thing. Okay. <coughs> Knight goes to d7. And cd5. I'm trying to prove here that a uh, pair of bishops and uh, slightly more uh, space can compensate the general vulnerability of my pawns in the center. By the way, taking on d5 wasn't possible because of queen a5 check. And if knight goes away, sorry, goes back, I just take the bishop. It's a well-known trick. All right, now, uh, bishop e7 should be played, or just h6 right now. Let's play h6 because maybe I will put my bishop on d6. <coughs> Tango says switch to Twitch. By the way, I have a Twitch account as well. So you can find it here below. It is Mostrovsky. So you can follow me on Twitch if you want. And you can support me there on uh, streamlabs.com slash Mostrovsky again. So everything is more or less connected with this Mostrovsky nickname. 
Rook to c1, never ever seen this before, at least in this position. So now b5 is a threat, I understand. So let's play a6. Controlling b5 square, preventing this. Knight b5 and anything else connected with this square. So queen to b5 can be also a possibility of a check later on. And uh, in general, if I put my bishop on d6, it looks much safer when a6 is played. All right, right. Let's put the bishop on d6 now. Nothing can stop me from that. It looks like a French defense reversed, uh, but without the French bishop for uh, the guy who plays French. In this case, it is white. Okay. What book you recommend for that topic in the middle game? Two bishops versus knight plus bishop. I don't think there is a, a specific book, uh, but there is, for example, the book um, of um, uh, Gelfer. Uh, don't really remember uh, the name because I read it in Russian translation, and it's probably different. Uh, it's about uh, the winning strategy or something like that. And another book is uh, the game, uh, the, the middle game um, practice and theory by Panchenko. There is a translation to um, English. And uh, as far as I remember, if I'm not mistaken, there is a chapter dedicated to this, as well as some chapters in uh, John Nunn's uh, Understanding Chess Middle Games. There are definitely some chapters dedicated to pair of bishops advantage. Okay. So. Queen to b3. Pawn d5 isn't hanging, but it will be very soon. It's not hanging right now because after knight 5 knight 5 I have bishop b4 check. <coughs> so I can play b5 if I want, I guess. Bishop g4 is also an interesting try, but b7 is hanging. If I castle, white castles, d5 is already hanging. So, you know, let's play b5. Let's play aggressively. Now, bishop g4 or bishop e6? White is preparing f3. Mm, let's play bishop e6. And f3. Well... Potentially, we'll have some problems with d5 for sure. Maybe just b4 right now, getting rid of this knight in the center at least. But then it goes to a4 and then to c5. Now I'm misplaying it a bit. Let's castle. Let's make a stake on active counterplay. If white takes, I also take. And in this, I'll take this knight for sure. Because now if e takes, well, I will have this object of attack. If g takes, well, pawns are quite weak in general. Um, now, what to do now? What should be correct reaction to this? Uh, queen b6, I think. <coughs> And now what? Rook to d8 or rook to c8? Rook to c8 looks like a move. Missing some tactics. Yeah. This is a 9. For sure. Nice idea. So now it goes to c5. Now I definitely have some problems. What should I do now? Okay, let's take it. I don't see anything better than that anyway. So d4? Yeah, d4. Aggressive chess. Come on. Let's do it, guys. Let's play aggressive chess. Let's push those pawns. Let's push those pawns. I like how they go together. Um, what to do now? That's a good question. First, I think let's activate the rook. Mm. Started making some stupid moves. Yeah. Let's come back to normal moves. 
Uh, bishop c6 attacking the queen. It's important. Now let's go there. Attacking f3. Knight to g4 is also an idea here. But d4 is hanging. Wow. Okay. Should protect it, I guess. It's too important to be not protected. Now knight g4 looks great because I have this additional resource. But only 30 seconds. That's annoying. That's annoying. Yeah, 16 seconds, I'm going to lose this. Position was close to winning, I think. Yeah, I accept the draw. Thank you, that was generous. Position was close to winning at some point. My opponent uh, somehow <coughs> missed my play uh, based on this uh, crazy pawns. So let's have a look at that situation. So d4, I think this looks great for black. Going to a3, b4 looks forced. Now queen a4, I played, I played e3, which also looks great. So now rook to e1, how to, to play here? There should be something decisive, I think. Maybe there is no decisive thing, but something like bishop to c4, I guess, was, was correct from a positional point of view. Controlling this d3, uh, controlling f1, uh, intending to play bishop b5, protecting a6. So, so many different ideas behind only one move with the bishop. This looks great. I mean, d3 is prepared as well after bishop c4. Um, yeah, and if rook to c1, let's say, I just play queen to d5 and I'm fine. Attacking this one, uh, having this b5 square for a bishop and so forth. Yeah, probably bishop c4, I missed that. Somewhere here, I started feeling like white is just regrouping. For example, here after a5, white could have played queen to b5, let's say, which was also quite good just to simplify the things to prevent this attack and so forth. And here again, uh, I started feeling that um, I missed some direct win or maybe something looking like a direct win. Um, bishop to f3 probably doesn't work. Or maybe it does. Queen to d5, that's what I missed. Bishop takes f3, oh my goodness, that was so simple. I considered only queen to h5, actually. King goes back to g2, but queen d5 just wins right now. <laughs> yeah, I missed such a great resource here. And then queen g2, checkmate, goodbye. Yeah, that was gorgeous. Could have been gorgeous. Um, by the way, after queen to b3, it still works. I mean, now I can check from c6, the same. Same story, and uh, queen to g, g, g2 and uh, goodbye. Oh my god, that was bad. I mean, really bad. Right here, knight g4 was interesting. Why didn't I play that? Have no idea. Uh, but h4, that's why I didn't play that. So just h4 or maybe h3. Uh, no, h4, obviously. And if knight here, then rook takes d4. That's why I didn't play that. Knight to g4. But okay, bishop f3 was just good enough. Here after queen d3, knight g4, and queen f2, again, my position became quite promising. Uh, but then after queen a6, uh, I started misplaying it. So I took here, which was probably okay. Um, oh no, it was stupid. Just queen g4 here, look at this. I missed so many great attacking resources, like queen to g4. My goodness. Just queen to g4, creating sort of queen h3. Should be just lost, right? So rook h1 is the only move. Now I take on h1, attacking g3. Yeah, so something like... So queen c6 doesn't work because of this. At the very least, queen h4, king goes back, queen f2, and then I take the bishop. It's absolutely lost. <coughs> so h1 should be captured here. If king takes, I take on f3, so rook takes. In which case, I just play queen to e6, and again, white can resign, because there is a sort of 
Bishop to f3 very soon. There is a threat of taking on a2. There is a threat of d3. So much better version of what I received in the game. Um, I just taken, took on d1, rook to d1. And here I played d3. That was stupid, of course. Something simple like queen to c5 should be should be winning. All right. There is nothing to discuss. Black has this great pawns in the center, much better bishop, much more active pieces, and so forth. Many resources, many different ideas. All right. So, uh, d3 was stupid. Yeah, but bishop f3, how could I, how could I miss such a thing? I mean, so great. So typical, I mean. <laughs> Bishop takes f3, yeah, decides here. So why can play in a much more aggressive style here against these pawns? So uh, first of all, taking here, uh, e3 is probably okay. Taking here, uh, rook c1, in my opinion, is just uh, not necessary. So you can do the same thing, attacking this pawn quickly. So castling f3 without losing the time on this rook to c1. It doesn't necessarily uh, accomplish anything, in my opinion. Mm, that's the recommendation. Okay, guys, um, I'm going to play the last game tonight and uh, let it be, let it be Mr. Strange. Three minutes again. Let's try to attack. And Sicilian gives me a chance to attack usually, but... Uh, not this line necessarily. This is the one I usually play with black if I play blitz and want to play something not typical. <clears throat> so, not sure that knight to c6 is the greatest move here. Now I can play e5 and actually come up with the attacking ideas at some point. So let's start with the a3 controlling b4. I think it's vital for playing c4. And black decided to play b5, which is double-edged. Which is double-edged, but probably playable. Okay, let's go f4. Now I think c4 should be played, right? Or not? Just to come up with slightly better pawn structure. On the other hand, I'm not sure it matters. So let's play knight to c3. I mean, if knight takes, pawn takes, well, pawns are more or less equal, but my bishop on c4 looks great, especially if I manage to play f5 at some point. And what is really important here, this bishop is limited with the pawn on c5. Okay, now I think f5 should be played. If black gives me such an opportunity, I should use it. So just f5. Activating my light squared monster. <clears throat> Obviously, something like g6 here already deserved attention to stop me at least from playing this f5 immediately. Now I have very good attacking setup. Bishop d5, all right. What is better, to play f6, to take on e6, or to take on d5? I guess everything looks very, very uh, promising. Let's take on d5, let's say, and play f6. This can't be a bad idea for white. <coughs> and now just e6, or what? Yeah, e6 looks perfect. <laughs> Follow up of uh, the f6 move. Just a crazy attack. Super aggressive. Just like I wanted to play each and every game tonight. Let's take here, double check. Now check from h5. Looks very close already because I attacked d5 as well. I'm attacking everything here. The only real difference uh, between white's position here and black's one is that white castled. 
and black skin is just under fire. That's a big problem. Okay, takes on d5, and I can take the rook. There is no bishop c5 whatsoever because bishop is pinned. Wow, super, super win by the end of the show. Okay, guys, thank you for being with me this night. Thank you for being patient uh, because I know uh, what sort of challenge it could be to hear me, a uh, non-native speaker, uh, speaking English, uh, having sore throat and runny nose. But uh, I still believe that it was fun. Uh, it was instructive. Uh, so we discussed a lot of different things, by the way, uh, while playing chess, right? So we, we discussed a lot of interesting aspects of uh, improving your chess, improving your calculation. We discussed some books. So it was really cool discussion, in my opinion. And uh, hopefully... Uh, you learned something and you have something to take away uh, from this session as well. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can find the link here. It is bit.ly slash Mastrowski and uh, follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Twitch. You can find these links here as well. Uh, see you very, very soon. Uh, wish you a great week and bye-bye. Take care.